We were in exile. And while we were in exile, we, we experienced all kinds of, of trials and, and tribulations. I just read, read to you about one of those. The king tried to, tried to have us eat his food and wine. And we knew that God would not approve of that. Because this was meat that had been offered to idols. It was, it was wine that had been poured out in libation to, to the altars of their gods. We couldn't eat that. And we stood firm. And as you heard, God was with us. God watched over us and took care of us. But it wasn't just food that was a trouble. No, there was another time where, where Nebuchadnezzar made a, a giant statue. And he commanded that everyone had to bow down to that statue. And my friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood firm and said, no. God's commanded us not to do that. We're not to bow down to anything made with human hands. God had given that commandment to Moses. They stood firm. So the king threw them into a fiery furnace. But God was with them. God's messenger was in the furnace with them and protected them. And they came out unscathed. And then another time, another king. This king said, you can't pray to your God. You can't pray to your ancestors. You can't pray to anyone but me. For 30 days, just pray to me. How can we do that? How can we pray to anyone but the one true God? And I stood firm. And as I have always done, I pray morning, noon, and night to God. And when they caught me, they threw me into a lion's den, filled with, with starving, ferocious beasts. But God closed the mouths of the lions. He protected me. And because of this, the king knew that our God, our God is the one true God. But we were still in exile. You see, we were in exile not because God turned his back on us. We were in exile because we had turned our back on God. God had brought our people out of Egypt. With a, a mighty hand and a strong arm, Moses led us through the water of the Red Sea, through the desert. God fed us with, with bread from heaven, with manna. And he gave us water from the rock to drink. And he gave us his commandments and laws, which no other people had. And then he led us into the promised land. A land flowing with milk and honey. He gave us this land. He drove the other people out. And we inherited it. We had everything we needed. But did we turn to God and gratitude and worship him and follow his ways? No. No, we worshiped their gods. The gods of the people who had been there before us. We married their, their daughters, and our daughters married their sons. And we did the things that God told us not to do. And we, we tried to, to set a king over us so that we would be like the other nations. And we worshiped the Baals and Asherah. And finally, after God had sent prophets and priests, bring us back to his way, and we refuse to listen. Finally, God said, enough. If you don't want me, you won't have me. And Nebuchadnezzar came and destroyed Jerusalem. 
and he took us into exile. But, but the thing is, our exile really didn't begin there. We were in the same exile that all of us are in. Because our first parents, Adam and Eve, God had, God had made them and put them in this beautiful garden with everything they could ever ask for. God, God had even been so gracious as to give them the opportunity to experience the joy of obedience by giving them one command, just one command so that they could experience what it was to be obedient to him. He told them not to eat the fruit of this one tree. But they wouldn't listen. Instead, they wanted to be gods for themselves. That's what the serpent whispered to Eve. Oh, you eat this, and you will be like God. They wanted to be gods for themselves. And they sinned. And were put in exile. And all of us have been in exile ever since. We're in exile from, from God. We're in exile from what we were created to be and the lives we were created to live. And I don't know how you experience that exile. We experience that exile physically, being put into that wall. But we all experience that exile in one way or the other. Maybe you experience that exile in, in relationships with family that aren't what, what they should be. Maybe it's just a sense that, that you don't really belong here. That somehow this is home, but it's not. Maybe you experience exile with just a deep longing for something you can't even name. But we're all in exile. And what do you do? What do you do while you are in exile? Well, one place to start is doing what we did in Babylon. To stand firm. To follow God regardless of what is around us. To stand firm. You know, we, we could do that. We could stand firm and not eat the king's meat. We can stand firm and not bow down to the statue he erected. We can stand firm and not, not pray to the king, not trust in a government instead of God. We could do that because God had promised us that the exile would not last forever. We knew it would come to an end. See, God had promised us through the prophets, through, through Jeremiah. Jeremiah who said, for, said for God, conveyed God, God's words to us that I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. God spoke to the, the prophet Ezekiel and said, I'm going to take away your hearts of stone and give you hearts of flesh. Hearts that beat for me. God spoke to the prophet Isaiah saying, comfort, comfort my people to know that their penalty is paid. God had promised that the exile was not going to last, so we could stand firm, trusting that eventually it would be over. But God made similar promises about the, the exile that we're all in. God has promised that that will not last either. God promised Eve, he said to Eve, your offspring will crush the head of that serpent who deceived you. And he promised Moses that someday one will come after you, a prophet like you, to lead my people. He promised David that one of your seed will sit on the throne and his kingdom will have no end. God, throughout Scripture, has promised us the Messiah. 
the Messiah who would lead us out of exile. And knowing that promise, we can stand firm. You see, that's a promise that, that my people look forward to. God saved us through the promise of a coming Messiah. But we didn't know who he was, what he would be like exactly. But you, you have the privilege of knowing because he is coming in the person of Jesus Christ, Jesus the Messiah. That is the promise we look forward to and the promise that you look back on. That the exile will not last. That it will come to an end. What a joyful thing that is. The joy that we experienced when God brought us out of Babylon and back to Jerusalem, it was indescribable. It's the kind of thing you can't put in the words unless you're a poet. And in fact, our poets did that. We wrote a prayer, a song. And I, I want to sing that song together. So we're going we're gonna to recite this song together. And I'm going to sing the first part, and then you're going to echo, echo the next part to me, OK? So let us, let us recite this song together. Remember when the eternal brought back the exiles to Zion? It was as if we were dreaming. Our mouths were filled with laughter. Our tongues were spilling over into song. The word went out across the prairies and the deserts, across the hills, over the oceans wide, from nation to nation. The eternal has done remarkable things for them. We shook our heads. All of us were stunned. The eternal had done remarkable things for us. We were beyond happy, beyond joyful. And now, now my eternal one, some are held captive and poor. Release them and restore our fortunes as the dry river beds of the south spring drink of life when the rains come upon us. Those who walk the fields to sow and plant with signs will return. Singing with joy. So, Sorry. <laughs> those who walk the fields to sow, casting their seeds in tears, will one day tread those same long roads, amazed by what has happened. Those who weep as they walk and plant their sides will return, singing with joy when they bring home the harvest. Amen. We experience incredible joy. Brothers and sisters, that is nothing compared to the joy that we will experience when the Messiah leads us out of our exile into his eternal kingdom. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.